Whoa. So I think the biggest regret I have in uh, 2016 is that I didn't really have very much Vietnamese food. And that's unfortunate because I, I am Vietnamese. But I think this year I really, really want to um, embrace my culture and kind of show you all the foods that we eat. I know I've already done a pho video, but I figured I would just do another one. It would be a fresh start to the year and I'm excited. Maybe all you see is steam right now. Let me turn this down a little bit. I'll just keep it on warm. It doesn't need to be boiling. Not for pho, because you don't want the noodles to, um, to get really soggy or anything like that. Anyways, I have egg rolls as well. As you can see, beautiful vegetables. Um, crunchy egg rolls, Vietnamese egg rolls to be specific. Um, some people call them spring rolls, I, I don't know. They're egg rolls. And yes, they are a little different from Chinese egg rolls. They do have different ingredients on the inside. Um, so it does, it does make a difference. I have all my ingredients for my pho here. I'm just gonna let this guy calm the fuck down. And I have this beautiful, delicious lychee milk tea. I actually got this at um, Four Seasons Tea. Um, I'll link down below. If you're in the Orange County area, I recommend you go into this place. The customer service is kind of strange. He's kind of weird, the owner, but their milk tea is amazing. That's all you need to know. So I'll have that. I love the container too. That sticker is very um, Vietnamese, if you will. Flowers and birds and all that beautiful stuff. All right, I think the broth is good. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my noodles. Whoa, <laughs> let's not do that again next time. I have some noodles right here with onions, cilantro, green onions. And it's actually raining right now, so you know pho is always perfect on the rainy day. Always perfect. All right, the noodles look really good. This here is rare beef. Sit in there and now it's time for the most important part to me how you flavor your broth personally i'd love to get absolutely crazy with the broth with hoisin sauce and um and sriracha see there put a healthy dose of hoisin Gotta have a sriracha, make it spicy. And this here is actually um, vinegared onions. Not everyone gets that with their pho, but I personally love to eat it on the side. Kind of like your kimchi to your Korean meal. There is never enough Lime juice for pho. Never enough lime juice. All right. That smells amazing. Keep it 
warm. All right. I love the way this leaf smells. I think this is a uh, chrysanthemum leaves. I always put veggies in my pho. I know some people do without it, but I need the veggies. To me, it's not a pho without this. Oops. These are basil leaves. Fragrant as well. Gotta get him in there. Perfect. All right, and I have some bean sprouts. Do not be shy. I love the crunch it gives. Wish you can smell this. It smells so good. Yes. I'm going to move this over. Amazing. All right, guys. I'm ready to have my soup. So perfect. Mm. Mm. Wow. I can not describe it to you. That's why people eat this <clears throat> when they're either hung over or they're feeling sick. I think the um, the spices that the soup uh, that sits in the soup really helps with um, I don't know sickness overall. So freaking good. Gotta have one of these.
incredible. Dip it in some of the sauce. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. I'm in absolute heaven right now. You don't even know. Don't you like my little pot? This guy was so... Well, to me, it was expensive. But I thought it'd be perfect. From now on, if I ever cook any soups, it'll be in this pot here. Because I actually want to uh, want you guys to see the contents of the soup. A lot of times you see the top, which is fine, but I think this I think this kind of adds to the aesthetic, the aesthetics of food, right? Meatball. Try to get meatball with your foe one time. I really love it. My dad got me into it actually. Mm. So the reason why I have all these leaves out here um, on this board is because technically what you should be doing, well, you shouldn't, you don't have to do it, but what I recommend you do is to actually make, um, put your egg rolls in kind of a lettuce wrap. That's how Vietnamese people usually eat it with some cilantro and some, uh, some of those purple mint leaves. You grab another one of those guys. So you have a little lettuce egg roll, lettuce egg roll burrito. <clears throat> All you have to do is take your sauce here. Watch out for the dripping. Mm. Mm. 
This is everything. You're probably wondering why <clears throat> it looks a little different and why I'm actually sitting on the floor, if you haven't noticed, is because last time I made the mistake of doing my Shabu Shabu video, since I'm dealing with soup, you know, the last thing I, uh, I would want is for the soup to fall over all over the carpet. It would be awful to clean up. So nothing happened in that video, however, I just wanted to be cautious this time, so. That is why I am on the floor, and it's actually quite comfortable. I kind of like it. Who knows, I might stay this way forever. Hmm. My, I used to have uh, every single weekend on Sundays, right after mass with my parents. And um, it, it's such a great memory. I mean, I know that pho is delicious, but for me, it's a personal thing. And I think that's for every culture. Every culture has their type of food that they associate with their family and all that good stuff. This is one of them. And I think, personally, I think my dad ate it the best way. My mom, she only had, I don't know, she was very, I don't know, my mom was so picky with food. Very, very picky. But I don't blame her. She's like, I don't know, she's lactose intolerant, I think. Growing up too, my parents would always, they loved it. I don't know if it's Vietnamese parents or specifically, or I don't know, maybe another culture shares this, but with Vietnamese people, when you know how to eat certain things, such as tongue, um, you know, what else is disgusting? Balut, which is that fertilized egg or something like that. Um, pig's blood, all that good stuff. I mean, things that people are normally grossed out by. Even some Vietnamese people are still grossed out, <coughs> grossed out by it. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I, I remember that I was the only one who was willing to eat it. My brothers, my sisters, they all thought it was disgusting. And I was the only one willing to eat it. And I remember my mom saying, you know, um, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy for knowing how to eat this stuff. Go. And it made me so happy. So I think that's why my relationship with food is very, is pretty deep because I associate food um, with positivity. And my parents gave that to me, you know? So oh, it just makes me warm. The smell of pho makes me warm. And my goal here is to push Vietnamese food to you guys the best I can, right? Because mukbang originated with Korean food. But I think this is my opportunity to showcase what we can offer as far as cuisine. Um, sorry, something is stuck in my throat.
My parents are very different though. They're not, they're not the same at all. They're polar opposites. But they are together. <clears throat> Unlike, I would say, 80% of my friends. You know, my parents are not divorced, which is pretty, I don't know, it seems rare these days. <clears throat> Maybe with the older generation, maybe they're more likely to stay together, but I think that um, my generation or the one before that um, are more willing to depart, right? But I feel really lucky to still to have parents that are still together and that care each other, uh, about each other very deeply. Like, I think I, th I think I take that for granted, and I forget how many friends I have that um, have experienced divorce. <clears throat> It's crazy. It's the one thing I can't relate to if someone talks to me about it. Just because I've, I've never experienced it before. I've never experienced like a broken family or anything like that because I grew up in a wonderful family. And I will say so, I'm not gonna play any victim, you know, I'm not gonna play the victim card because nothing was terrible. I mean, there were a few things, but <clears throat> for the most part, I think we were good. Except for my older brother, but that's that's gonna be another time. I really don't want to talk about that. How amazing. So good. And then I got lazy. Just pick at it and put it in your mouth. But here's the thing, though. I mean, they were, they're still together today, but that does not mean that they did not have disagreements. And, I mean, they had fights. It was, I just remember being so intense. Like, their screaming was so, my dad's screaming was awful. It made me feel awful. It made my siblings feel awful. And he was a dish thrower, too. He loved to throw dishes. I don't know if it was at my mom. I actually never saw because I was always hiding in the room or the closet. Um, but I remember hearing just dishes all the time hitting the floor and cracking. I mean, breaking. And I just thought to myself, oh my God, is he throwing dishes at mom? But I don't know if he was just taking them out of anger and just slamming them on the, the floor. But you, I mean, when we were done, I would literally just see dishes on the floor everywhere. Broken dishes. I just, oh man, I hated it when they fought. It gave me so much anxiety. Thinking about it right now just like is making me shiver because I don't like it. It gives me really high anxiety. I know they're older now. No, I know I'm older now. Just thinking about it. Just the way I felt. 
as a child, hearing my parents fight. It was just... <sighs> And my sweet brother, my oldest brother, he was so sweet. Every time, you know, he was always, always, always playing video games. I'm sorry. He's always playing video games. And most of the fights, for some reason, happens when he's playing video games in the room. So I would always hide in his room. And he was the sweetest. He would always turn up the volume of the TV so that it would block out, you know, it would block out, like, the noise, you know? And I remember just sitting there, like, with my hands over my head. I mean, my ears rocking back and forth. I do not like it when people fight. I think it, it just gives me so much anxiety, especially your parents. But I swear, I think my mom would always start the fights, though. No. I really do think she's the one who starts the fights. Because <clears throat> my dad's a pretty cool guy. So look. Friend, if you have a child or anything, and if you... And if you do get into arguments, which is bound to happen, that's normal. Um, around your children, I guess just be mindful. I mean, you were a child once. I know you've experienced it before, but I think today, <clears throat> just kind of reflect on those experiences, right? And make sure that the child is nowhere around when you're doing that. Because I think that they'll never forget it. They, they never will. Maybe they're not like me. Maybe I'm holding on to it too much, but I don't know. I just, oh, I don't like it. It just makes me, ah, I want to scream. So I'm glad they're better today. They don't fight as much. Or at all, actually. I'm not going to be lazy this time. I'll make my little egg roll lettuce wrap here. Uh, right. Refreshing, delicious. So if you didn't know, I do have two older brothers and one younger sister. So I'm pretty much the middle child.
Growing up, I was actually really close to my sister. My oldest brother is maybe not so much, but... Um, but today, none of us really talk. I mean, we see each other for family events, but we're really not as close. Like, we don't communicate over text. We don't say anything to each other unless it's an emergency. Um, it's not... There's no, blood, like, bad blood between us. It's just... None of us really make the effort, you know? Here's the thing that I've always questioned. Just because, you know, just because we're born into a family, kind of, you know, the luck of the draw, right? Does that necessarily mean that we have to have a relationship with our family members? Do we have to be... Do we have to like our brothers and sisters? I'm assuming most people like their brothers and sisters, right? They don't necessarily have to be close to them or, you know, you don't have to be besties for life. But I, I think that's something that I'm always thinking about because I know a lot of people who has either disowned, disowned their own mother, you know, or kind of just not talking to the brothers or their sisters anymore just because of some something that they can't resolve or simply because they just can't get along and that's something that people people like to think oh that's terrible like how could you how could you think your family that way but there are just times when you just don't get along with the people that you grew up with or that you live with that i personally think that it's okay if you cannot have a relationship with your sibling, even your parents. Um, why is it that we're why is it that we're expected to have relationships with them because we share a bloodline, like because we're related? I mean, some of our relatives could be kind of the cruelest people, even if you have a cruel family member. Do you choose them over your friends? Do you choose family over friends? Because it seems like that's always, that's always what I'm hearing when I'm getting to, you know, in family get-togethers. Choose family first. Family comes first. Well, what if one of them's a complete asshole? Like, is it okay if I, you know, is it okay if I don't want to be around that person? Is it okay if I don't talk to my own family member? Like, ugh, it gets so messy, but I know that this happens a lot. It's very common, even in my in, even in my boyfriend's life. Um, he doesn't talk to his mom anymore, but I don't know. Tricky situation. Kind of crazy. I've said this once, and I think I'll say it again. I mean, there are, I have some better friends than I do family members. Um, it's true. I mean, if you really, really think about it, it's kind of true, and it kind of sucks, but it's, it's harsh reality, I think. And just because you are related to them doesn't mean you are expected to have a good relationship with them or a close relationship with them. That needs to go away. That idea, that whole family is family, you know, thing needs to go. Because here's a funny story. I, I've been to um, kind of a distant cousin's funeral before. And it was really weird because... He's family. I mean, I've, I saw him at events, weddings, whatever, you know, family get-togethers. I said, you know, hello now and then, you know, talk, small talk. 
nothing too personal and nothing um, that would consider, you know, nothing that would make our relationship closer. Um, it was all surface talk, really. But anyways, um, I was there. And I felt, I felt terrible because I didn't cry. Like, I did not... I'm not saying I wasn't sad because I was sad, but I, I didn't cry. I think I felt bad for not feeling that emotion. Now, I never told this to anybody, but I recently um, connected with one of my friends because she had brought it up to my attention. She came up to me. I mean, crazy. I, I wanted to kiss her when she said it. She said, I just got back from my uncle's funeral. Is it bad that I didn't cry? Like, she literally... I mean, that is some human shit there. That is what I live for. I live for things like that. I exist because I want to hear things like that. Something so raw like that. You didn't feel bad at your uncle's funeral. You weren't sad. You didn't cry. The truth is, that's almost okay. I mean... Why force yourself to cry if you're not feeling it? You didn't have a close relationship with this person. You didn't build a rapport. You didn't create memories with this person. How are you supposed to miss them? Granted, I did feel bad though. And I think I did maybe kind of tear up a little bit, but that was because I had seen my other cousin cry. And that made me sad because I felt bad for her, right? I felt sorry. Um, that she was missing some, someone that was important in her life. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I was directly sad at him passing. It's a, it's a sad situation. I think it's something that it's hard for people to talk about because they don't want to come off very cold, right? Or soulless or heartless. No, bitch. Trust me, I am full of love. And <clears throat> I would die. I would quite literally die if my dog passed away. My dog. I love it so much. I don't even love it. I love them so much. I would die if my parents... I mean, it, it's just... It's so hard for me to talk about. I think it's it's still for me very taboo to admit. I think that you, don't, you just don't get sad. But you're almost expected to, right? You're almost... Um, I guess just to be respectful, you just stay quiet and, you know, you you try to um, empathize with those who are, you know, feeling down or sad. Interesting, right? I don't know. I experience new things all the time, different events, different situations, and I have to share them with you. Whether or not I'm wrong, I might be a complete psycho. I, I don't know. You're the one who trusts me. <laughs> hmm. Mm. So much family talk all over pho, told you. Family and pho for me goes hand in hand. Oh, it's rainy outside. It feels so good. But anyways, I really want you guys to give me your thoughts and opinions. Have you experienced this before? I don't know. Hmm.
All right, guys. I think I'm good here. Thank you for sharing some raw emotions with me. Or letting me at least share it with you. Um, I don't know, there's just some things I, I, I have to say. And it's important for me to get it out. Whether or not it's... Um, it's normal or whether or not it's taboo i don't know if it's if it's out of the ordinary then i guess it's important to talk about right even if you think it's kind of weird um i'm pretty open-minded if you haven't noticed um i don't care i think that life life is so interesting and i don't think we we really you know look at the details to me that's a small detail right not crying at a funeral or not feeling sad when you are expected to. I, I knew this person, you know, but it's just one of those things. Anyways, I am super full, but I'm so happy to have, um, to have had this dinner with you. I'm sorry. I am so full, I can't even process a freaking thought or a sentence right now. But anyways, it's good to see you. Um, and I'll always, I'll always be with you. I'll see you soon. Bye.